Hello, today we're going to have a look at uh, federal taxes and uh, how to file your tax return. So we're going to start with the steps that uh, you see in the textbook and uh, go through the steps and then we'll take a minute and look at an actual blank tax return, um, which can be intimidating at first, but uh, the, you know there's short forms and uh, it's relatively easy to file now if you have basic income. Uh, you can do it uh, relatively easy. All right, so the first thing is that you want to start, of course, with step one, and you're looking for total income. So this is your worldwide income. Um, so employment, you get T4 slips from your employer. You know, you might get T3s and T5s with investment income uh, from your financial institutions. You might have a business, so you'll show your net business income on your tax return and and again other investment income you might have um, uh, in, there are capital gains things like that that uh, need to be reported that aren't on a slip all right so that's your your worldwide global income you need to record all that so if you have your bank account in the Cayman Islands and you don't get a slip well you're still supposed to report all your income right all right and then step two uh, is deductions. So don't, uh, we'll talk about credits later, so don't confuse that with deductions. So deductions, you get your total gross income, and then in step two, you get to deduct certain items. So fully deduct them from your gross income. So the most common ones are RSPs, registered pension plans. If you have a, a profit participation plan with your employer, you may have a slip for that as well. Uh, union and professional dues, so those are deductible. If you have child care expenses, um, you can deduct those. And um, moving expenses, so you have to move to get another. You're going to work somewhere else. Uh, it's over, I think, 60 kilometers away, and so you have to move. And so all those moving expenses are deductible. Just And again, with everything, make sure you save your slips and documentation. Uh, moving expenses, they'll typically audit, do a desk audit, and that's routine, so just make sure you have all those. Uh, other things, business investment losses, so you may have investment losses to claim. Uh, you may have borrowed money to make investments, so again, you have to keep track of all that, but that is deductible at this point. Uh, you may be eligible for employment expenses, it's fairly limited. But if you're a commission salesperson or you have to travel for work, there are uh, employment deductions there. Um, and then there was, of course, some deductions for working from home if you were uh, able to do that. Uh, and then they gave you a prescribed amount or a detailed uh, deductions if your employer was willing to sign off on the form. Okay, so that you, you might think, well, we're still missing a few things, and we are. So at this point, we've got uh, most of our eligible deductions, and we'll show you the tax form here at, at the end, uh, just so you can get a sense of all of these items. And again, it's a little bit overwhelming at first, but a lot of them don't apply to most people. So, uh, but let's uh, okay. So let's look at our next step three. So now we got total income, we have deductions, and that gives us our net income. Okay, so we've arrived at net income. And then the next thing we need to do is calculate our taxable income. Okay, so to get to taxable income, we have some additional deductions before we get to the actual tax rates. Okay, so we've got net income. Now we take that net income. From net income, we deduct the following. From net income, capital gains deduction. So you may be eligible for that depending on the nature of your capital gain. You may have uh, net capital losses from prior years. So just keep uh, non-capital as generally business net capital relates to capital gains and losses. So you can uh, claim these from prior years. You can carry them forward, so you would do it here. If you happen to have security options, um, deductions, so you would, there would be some income on a slip above, and then this provides a deduction. So. Uh, if you're in that situation, um, uh, you can uh, deduct those. 
All right, so now we've, we've arrived at taxable income. So we now have a taxable income amount, and these are the federal tax rates. These are in your book as well. This is 2019, and I don't think they've changed drastically. Uh, I don't think it, for the federal rates, I don't think they've changed at all. Um, so essentially, on the first uh, $47,630, you're going to pay 15% uh, in federal taxes. And in Alberta, the tax rate is 10% in addition to that. So in Alberta, you have a 25% tax rate on that first 47630 And then on the next dollars above that amount, 47630 to 95.259, you have a federal rate of 20.5% and then a tax rate in Alberta of 10%, giving you a total rate of 30.5%. I stopped there just because Alberta, the uh, uh, ranges change from what the federal rates are. They used to be consistent, and you, you know, you added 10%. Now they have additional bra tax brackets in Alberta that don't correspond directly with the federal, uh, so there's additional rates there. Okay, so once you get to the 95 to 59, uh, for Taxable income up to 147667 it's uh, 26%. And then you'd have Alberta taxes and anywhere from, you know, 37 to 39% to bring, for your total, that is. <clears throat> so they've raised the uh, provincial rates, again, are different. And there's different uh, tax brackets for the provincials, so I didn't show those. All right. <clears throat> so once you, once you get to... 95,259, then you'll have to look at the Alberta tax rates uh, to find out your total rates. All right, <clears throat> so the top um, federal rate is 33%. Uh, if you're making over 210,000, sorry, if you have taxable income over 210,371. Okay, so the next step then, you've got your tax rates. And now you can calculate your federal tax owing using these above rates. <clears throat> uh, just a little bit on MTR, so the marginal tax rate versus the average tax rate. Uh, so the marginal tax rate is your tax on the additional dollar, right? <clears throat> so let's say you're earning 95259 and then really this is 60 in the next bracket. So on that next dollar, you go from 95 uh, to 60, you're going to pay 26% of tax. So on that next dollar of income, you're going to pay 26 cents of tax on that next dollar of taxable income. So that's the marginal tax rate, the tax on the next dollar of income. So your average tax rate, so just make sure you're clear on that, your average tax rate, of course, is lower, right? So average tax rate, <clears throat> ATR, well, it's an average, right? So keep in mind that it doesn't matter where you fit in there. You know, your first 47,630, you're taxed at 15%, right? So that doesn't change. And on the next 47,631 up to 95,259, it's 20.5. So you can see, you know, you have an average rate here, depending where you're at, um, you know, total uh, taxes payable divided by the the income gives you your average tax rate. So, you know, you'd be somewhere, depending where you are in this range, somewhere between 15 and 20.5% would be your average tax rate and so on. So just make sure you're clear when, when you hear about marginal tax rate. That's the tax on the next dollar of income. Average is what you're paying on average. Total taxes paid, payable divided by your taxable income. All right, so step five, so you might have guessed, well, there's some other things going on that, um, you know, that, you know, don't, what about my personal deductions and all those things? Um, <clears throat> so these are, so once you have your net federal tax, you, have, you know what your tax is, there's offsetting credits. So these are credits, they're not deductions. So they're credits against your federal tax to get your net federal tax. So credit amounts directly against the federal taxes owing. Some are non-refundable, most are non-refundable, and then you have some refundable. So what's that mean? 
So non-refundable, it can bring your taxes payable down to zero, but it's not going to create a refund. So once it's at zero, it doesn't go any lower. A refundable tax credit will actually increase uh, your refund. So assuming you had no taxes owing, and a non-refundable, or sorry, a refundable tax credit will entitle you to a refund even though you don't owe any taxes. And most cases, it's a non-refundable tax credit. And we'll look at those, the personal exemption amount. Those are the typical uh, types of items we're talking about. All right, so that's uh, basically the steps you go through to do your tax return. Let's look at a tax return. And again, um, <clears throat> I'll just bring it up here. Don't, uh, don't be too uh, concerned by it. Uh, and so there, there's a there's simplified or short version. So this is the basic, long version. So you know, as you might expect, the first page you're putting in your name and mailing address, your birth date, your social security number, all those types of things, uh, marital status, um, information about your residence, where did you live at the end on December 31st. So this is 2020. This is the last available one. Uh, social insurance number here of your if you have a spouse or common law partner they want to know what their income is because many benefit programs are dependent on both incomes all right so not too much there there's elections canada if you do or do not want to be a cra to release your name to that uh, any exempt income <clears throat> you're supposed to disclose, uh, disclose if you own foreign property uh, so if you own any foreign property over a hundred thousand, you need to indicate that there. All right. So total income. So these are the you know these. This is that employment income. This is your world income. For most of it, it's you know employment income T four. There's your amount there. Uh, maybe you have commission income. Uh, those types of things. Other employment income you might have. If you have pension income, old old age security, Canada pension plan, any disability pensions, and so on. Other pensions. So there's there's a lot of items here. Um, if you have uh, rental or business income, you would uh, you can show that here as well. Okay. Or down here is your different types of business income. So gross, and then you'd show the net amount. So gross, less expenses, and then you'd fill out a schedule there. All right, so that gets us to our total income. Okay, next is step number three. So this is to get us to net income. And what do we have here? <clears throat> So here we have the things like our registered pension plan or our, or our RISP contributions. We can claim these here. Uh, deductions for union professional dues. Moving expenses. We talked about uh, carrying charges and interest. So if you have carrying charges or interest expenses against investment income that you have above, you can claim those. And then a few other items here um, that you can claim as well. All right, so this gets us to net income. So um, these are the line numbers that the CRA will reference. So many benefit programs are based on, you know, what's your net income or what's your total income. So it's um, there is a distinction there. So for, for benefit programs, it's important. All right, so next is our taxable income. So we, we go to our tax tables. We calculate our taxable income. So you'll see that here. Um, these probably were indexed, or they're slightly different than the 2019 rates, so that they will index them for inflation. So you'll just see the 2020 rates here. Okay, so <clears throat> here you just basically, so you see the um, 15 percent the 20.5 percent and then the different income levels and then basically you know it's on that first amount you pay tax at 15 once you get over that you pay it at the next rate and so on so you end up with your uh, total taxes payable here 
Here's the non-refundable credit. So uh, again, uh, the basic personal exemption. So everybody's eligible for that. Uh, again, these were indexed for 2020, so they're a little bit different than what you see in the book. Those were 2019. Uh, if you're over 65, you get an age exemption, so that helps you with your living costs once you're not once you're retired. Um, <clears throat> you also have um, some things with your spouse or common law partner amount, so you might get exemptions or claims. So you know, think of it like similar to a dependent. Uh, Canada caregiver amounts if you're supplying child care for an eligible dependent uh, you can claim that there uh, children is is covered by the universal uh, child care benefit so that's no longer on here so there's additional um, non-refundable credits so you paid uh, your basic CPP contribution so these are deductions off your check right so Employment Insurance, Canada Pension Plan, uh, deductions that you paid, uh, and so on. Okay, so you'll see quite a few other things listed here. Um, and But those are the key ones. Uh, so there's a lot here that uh, make up your total federal non-refundable tax credits. So those are netted against your federal tax payable. Okay, and then finally here you get to your net federal tax and basically by going through this so you get some credits um, for you know charitable contributions those are different rates most of the non-refundable credits are at 15 percent so it's based on the lowest uh, marginals or sorry the, lo the lowest uh, tax bracket so your credits are generally based on 15 percent there is a few exceptions there so there's your net federal tax you have a and then your prop provincial or territorial tax you'll fill out a separate schedule add that in and then you'll determine how much was withheld so you know source deductions from your employer that'll be on your t4 slip if you made any installment payments you would show those here and then at this point you would claim your um, re refund once you get to the bottom here so again, a lot of this, you know, you would um, leave blank, and on the short form, it wouldn't, um, it would be uh, a lot sh shorter than this, and so you wouldn't have to all these blank uh, boxes to worry about. So your refund, your balance, you sign this, you e-transfer it, or, or sorry, e-file it, or net file it, and uh, if you have a refund coming, well, they'll. Uh, They'll deposit that into your account if they have your information or send you a check. And if you owe them money, well, then you'll need to write the check to the receiver general. All right, so that's uh, basically what the tax form looks like. So just, um, and you can, you know, you can, there's an example in the book. Like I say, these rates are a little bit different just simply because this is 2020 and the book has the 2019 rates. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, just a little bit on taxes, so uh, hopefully now you feel a little more comfortable about things. And uh, like I say, I hope you found this useful and, uh, and know a little bit more about filing income taxes. Bye for now.